Welcome to the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, where you learn the best doubles strategies to improve your game and win more matches. I'm your host, Will Bocek. This podcast, my website, and my weekly newsletter all focus on the goal of better understanding the sport of doubles and helping players like you improve faster through actionable advice that you can use in your very next match. My goal is to provide the best double strategy resources in the world. And to do that, I study, analyze, and work with players at every level of the game, all the way up to the ATP and WTA tours. If you enjoy this podcast, I've created double strategy products that go even deeper if you want to take your doubles knowledge to the next level. At the end of this episode, I'll explain more about them, or if you want to learn more now, go to thetennistribe.com slash products. Here's today's episode. Horacio Zubayos and Marcel Granollers are number five and six in the world on the ATP doubles tour, and I caught up with them in Miami. This is going to be the last post-match interview from Miami. It's a very short one uh, that I wanted to get to you this weekend. Uh, before next week. So I chatted with them after their second round win. It was a very windy match. They played uh, Mate Pavic and Marcelo Arevalo. And we talked about the matchup as well as what they do when they're facing a team that they've uh, seen or they've at least seen those individual players so often over the last uh, several years. And they talk a little bit about uh, what sorts of adjustments they're still making, even though they've faced each other so many times. Uh, Horatio says that uh, it was one of the best matches they've played this year. Um, after that, we talk about playing in the windy conditions a bit. And then we talk about early in the season. Is it an advantage that they've played together for so long when there are these other teams like Arevalo and Pavic who are still kind of finding their footing together and they haven't played together uh, before this season. And then at the end, of course, we talk about how to make doubles more popular as well. So again, this is a very short conversation, uh, but I wanted to get it out to y'all. And next week, I'm going to have a new podcast, or at least on the next episode, I'm going to have a new podcast uh, that will be a solo episode about some recent doubles lessons that I've learned uh, coaching our high school tennis team. So uh, without further delay, enjoy this short conversation with Marcel Granollers and Horatio Zabayos. All right, so nice one earlier, guys. Um, What did you all make of kind of the match uh, overall? About the match? About the match? Yeah, Uh, yeah, I think we played a great match. Uh, The conditions were not easy today. It was very windy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel that uh, we played one of the best matches this year. Uh, It was against a very tough team so we knew that we have to take uh, every opportunity with, that we have and I think that was a key yeah. being very focused the, the whole match. Are there any adjustments you make in the wind specifically? Um, I noticed y'all were hitting a good amount of lobs um, and obviously if the wind's going one direction it's different on each side so how do you kind of handle the windy conditions? Well you have to adjust no? when it's uh, very windy but I think we mix very good today with lobs or uh, returning hard mm-hmm. and yeah obviously always it's important to hold serve but I think we, we really return very good today How do you go about game planning against a team or players that you've seen so often you have obviously played Mate and uh, Marcelo a, a number of times at this point um, do you kind of have your game plan kind of set and then just make adjustments from match to match or are you looking at a lot of their recent matches to see kind of if they've made any adjustments? Talk a little bit about that. Everything that you, that you said that is <laughs> what we try to do, right? Uh, we see a lot of matches, especially the last matches that they play, so maybe they are doing something new or not. Like you said, we play many times against them, so and they play against us, of course, and they know our uh, our weapons and uh, we know what they like to do, but uh, there is always something new that we can everybody can do so we try to to see the last matches that they play to to see if there is something like like i told you and and then of course we need to focus on them but we need to focus in us trying to do our best shots every every time that they, that we need it and and i think that yeah that, that's the key um so, so you'll have three finals so far this year obviously you've played together for a, a long time um 
Do you feel like that is an advantage early on in the season since there's so many new teams that are kind of trying to find their way and, and build that team chemistry? Well, for, for us it's good, no, that we are already playing for five years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I think this, this helps us for, for we know each other on, on court and we know what we, we do good. And yeah, for the other teams, maybe sometimes it take uh, time to, to adjust the game together. Other teams like uh, really fast, they connect and like, like us, uh, we, the first time we, we played together, we, we won a Master 1000, so you, you never know uh, how long it takes, but yeah, for, for us uh, now it's, it's good that we, we are playing for a long time. So the last question, uh, how do, can we make doubles more popular? That's a good question. I mean, uh, for sure it helps that most many singles players are playing right now. And maybe, I mean, we, we have a few ideas, like trying to to implement, I don't know, more music, something with the fans, or, but, but it's tough, it's tough. I mean, uh, there are some countries that we know that they like more doubles, like the U.S., like in uh, in England, in Australia, so I don't think they need something new about those countries because they, they really like the, the doubles. But then I, I know we are trying to, to get more, more ideas, so I, I don't know. Hopefully we can, we can do something because it's a very nice sport. Mm-hmm. Any comments? I don't know. Yeah, I know a lot of people is talking about how to get the fans more involved in doubles. Uh, we, are, we are talking about that and we'll see. Would you all be open to allowing fans to kind of come in and out during games? Or does that bother you on the serve too much? What, what? Sorry. Like to allow fans to come in and out and not wait for a changeover? I don't know. Any ideas? <laughs> if it works, it, yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we, we are open. I mean, we are yeah. open to, to, to try a few yeah. th- new things if that helps uh, doubles in the future. Yeah, of course. Sure. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Doubles Only Podcast. If you're interested in diving deeper into any topics I discuss, I've created double strategy products that allow me to bring you more podcasts and other doubles content without relying on paid ads. I have ebooks and courses that help you make better strategic decisions during matches and become the smartest player on the court. Go to thetennistribe.com slash products to learn more. You can also join my free weekly double strategy newsletter that includes video lessons and more on our homepage. If you want to connect, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or email me directly, will at thetennistribe.com.